Hi there, I'm Henrietta Dupka from MDC. Uh, I will be your host for today. Uh, welcome to the third week of MDC Tidbits. Um, in the recent two weeks, we have had more than 200 people joining this tidbits, these tidbit sessions, and they have been uh, coming from all over the world, from Curaçao to Singapore. We are very proud of that. So uh, welcome to uh, all of you being here today. We are glad that you want to spend your lunch with us. You'll get um, three uh, tidbits from, uh, from our uh, chef of today. It will be not more than a 30 minute session and you will find the tidbits every day, Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at 12 o'clock. Well, why did we do these tidbits? We don't want to do the long, long, boring stuff. So uh, this is just a small appetizer for you. But uh, let's get started. And uh, first I want to have a toast for a wonderful tidbit and uh, accompanied by uh, your nice lunch. And then I'm going to share with you what my dish of today is. That's pasta with pesto. And that's uh, in homage to Søren, uh, who is our chef today, because he loves Italy just as much as I, as I do. So uh, today, Søren, pasta with pesto is, uh, is my plate. Um, we're going to talk about leadership today. This is a very, very important topic in these times because it's easy to be a good leader in the good times, but when the bad times comes, that's when the shit uh, hits the fan. And um, we want to talk with you about how, you, what kind of leader you want to be remembered as, because this is the time where you have the opportunity to to do something different. And um, um, one thing that I spoke with Sean about is this is also what you can ask your, your, your future boss about. When you're attending a job interview, you might want to ask him, what kind of leader of you? How did you handle the COVID-19 crisis? What did you do which make the life different of, uh, of uh, your employees? So let me just give an example from our FPC team. Um, I got the idea that we should uh, change our profile pictures with the pictures from our home offices. Um, so uh, I'll put a I'll put a link here on your in in the chat where you can see as when you can get behind the scenes how the home offices of the 13 uh, MDC employees is looking alike. As you see here, I'm in my living room and I have my aunt eater. Uh, and I love art, so this is uh, this is kind of my environment where I do the tidbits uh, here. But um, let's get started. Uh, Sun, you are a leadership coach, and you know a lot about leadership in general, and also a lot about leadership at sea. So, uh, Sun, the floor is yours. Welcome to Sun Rigo. Thank you so much, Henriette, and uh, to all of you at MDC, and uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I've been looking forward to spending some time with you on this platform. It's actually interesting when we talk about the fact that we are together, even apart, virtually. A whole new set of skills are emerging. How do we understand how to read one another from just looking at a face and maybe with a few gestures in between? So uh, what I'm trying to share with you today is actually going to be applicable, not just uh, for leaders at sea, but should be applicable for leaders in many uh, industries and businesses uh, across across the world, even if you will. So let's just focus a little bit on, on on leadership itself. I mean, for the last twenty years, I've been doing nothing but leadership development, leadership training. I've been facilitating leadership conferences, uh, other events, and most of my time, I do coaching one on one and on teams. And the past couple of years, I've been doing a lot of coaching for officers at sea. Uh, quite an interesting uh, project, really, where you can actually be together with officers, leaders on the job as they are doing leadership with their crew. Rather fascinating. So if you want to reach out after this uh, this session, I mean, uh, find me on LinkedIn, uh, invite me to connect. I'll be more than happy to uh, to talk to you and to help you and support you in any way I can when it comes to leadership and development of leadership skills. Because basically, Developing our leadership skills is an ongoing process. What you picked up 10, 15 years ago is not going to keep you afloat anymore. Going forward, as we have seen it now, the world is changing and it's changing fast. So we need to step up and make sure that we develop our skills as leaders as we go. 
And that's why I want to share a few tricks and tips with you today. I think it's important to stress that transformative, self-disruptive leadership is what we really need to focus on. But then, you know, great leadership, it's not a product of perfect circumstances, is it? I mean, great leadership is required precisely because circumstances are seldom perfect. And I think we can all agree that at this time, those circumstances are not perfect at all. On the other hand, a good quote goes in terms of never waste a good crisis. Never let a good crisis go to waste. We can actually do something about yourself, your own leadership style in this crisis, because this is the time where you get a chance to really find and look for things that you want to do better and more of going forward. Keeping in mind that leadership is all about making sure that you can create the right conditions for your people, for your crew to be really high performers. Now, as we are assuming that this crisis, if you will, is uh, here to stay, I'm sure that you can agree with me that there are some of the basic leadership behaviors that we would all like to see more of. And at the moment, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the, the positives that we've seen already. Keeping in mind that this is like not, no, no, not rocket science, this is like common sense, yet it is not necessarily you know, common practice, which is really fascinating to me. Now, I'd like, Henry, if you can, please, to pull up a poll where I'd like you to please select some of the behavioral traits that you would like to see more of uh, from leaders going forward. Can we do that? Do we have a poll coming up, Henry? Yeah, you can see it down in the bottom of the screen. It should be there now. And if you can please vote on maybe one of or more of these leadership behaviors you would like to see more of. Let's see how that goes then. You can choose between building trust on your team. You can choose providing clarity to people. You can choose listening with the intent to understand. And you can vote for the engaging and involving teams around you. And as they say on the game show, you may vote now. All right. Quite a few of you are going for the fourth, engaging and involving teams around you. Quite a lot of you are going for the providing clarity to people. Uh, we have building trust on your, team, on your team coming up as well. Nobody's really voting for listening with intent to understand. It is a difficult skill, I know. All right, cool. I think we have two winners. I mean, we have two uh, behaviors sharing the first spot that is providing clarity to people and engaging and involving teams around you. Excellent. Let's come back to some of these traits, some of these behaviors as we as we progress. All right. OK. Now, we've already seen good examples, as I was uh, pointing out just before, um, around us. I don't know how, about how much you are actually uh, keeping up with trying to find out what exactly is going on in other places of either your industry or uh, other businesses around the world. Because clearly now is the time where we see the, uh, the sheep being separated uh, uh, from, the, from the goats, if you will, that some leaders are really stepping up to character, trying to make sure that they can really protect and create a safe environment for their people. Also to do something that maybe not necessarily was on their minds just a couple of weeks ago. One of the examples I saw the other day was that Google and Apple are now announcing a joint venture to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 virus by actually working out some sort of Bluetooth technology uh, that they're gonna be sharing with the world. Rather fascinating, keeping in mind that Google and Apple have for a long, long time be, been adversaries. I mean, they have been fighting in a marketplace where the competition is really fearful. But now they're teaming up. Think about how you can find somebody outside, if you will, your comfort zone that you could team up with and really make a big, big difference. Another great example I have been uh, uh, monitoring, monitoring, monitoring lately is actually CEOs going live on a YouTube channel once or twice a week in large organizations to make sure that they can stay connected with their staff, with their people. And coming back to your poll, your vote just from before, to make sure that they can actually keep up the engagement, keep up the loyalty, 
and keep up people's involvement to their actual workplace. Now, just recently, a Danish organization announced uh, its birth, if you will. It's called Mul Corona against Corona. And again, this is like a, a advisory board of former competitors, CEOs, CFOs, CEOs, and they're going to be combined. They're going to be sharing advice to businesses uh, across the board on how to do business beyond the crisis. I find that fascinating as well, that people are pulling together, you know, pulling together the resources, their genius, and sharing it for free for somebody who's really in the need of that kind of device. Yesterday, it was announced that American Airlines and the Hyatt Hotel chain are going to be offering complimentary vacations to health uh, staff people in New York City. So once this coronavirus is more or less under control, all the uh, staff are going to be, all the health staff are going to be offered a three-day vacation paid for in full and to take, you know, their family away to spend some time after this, uh, you know, horrible uh, crisis is over. A lot of you have attended uh, many webinars for free, being offered by consultancies and other companies for free, including this great idea, this tidbit thing. And again, this is a wonderful initi initiative for many, many people to be able to learn more as they go on this crisis journey. Keep in mind what we talked about you know, earlier in this, uh, in this uh, broadcast, that we want to make sure that we can update our skills as leaders all the time. And right now, there's a wonderful opportunity, never let a good crisis go to waste, there's a wonderful opportunity to check in to many of these, many, many different webinars that are being offered online. And this is really, really, you know, a fascinating and great thing too, I think. And then, you know, the final thing I just came across this morning, in the UK, a website has just been uh, uh, opening up for everybody around the United Kingdom to vote for their manager or to nominate their manager for being the best manager in the UK. Again, a great initiative that actually will be praising some of these, you know, a lot of these managers that are already doing it greatly and to be giving managers and leaders ideas to be great if they want to be that as well. So what I'd like to ask you is uh, to really, you know, share what some of your discoveries uh, have been uh, over the last couple of weeks and put it in the chat and we'll uh, follow up on that as we, uh, as we come to the closure. But what are some of the discoveries that you have seen? Uh, Henrietta was mentioning some of the examples. What have you seen from where you're sitting? So basically, if we look at it, again, coming back from the, the poll just before, what do you need to leave behind of the old kind of way of doing things as a leader? And what do you need to get more into? I mean, for my sake, I mean, traveling is some of the things that I have you know, left behind. I don't travel as much anymore as I did. Actually, I haven't been traveling at all the last couple of months. So I'm getting into something different than actually being traveling to get to, uh, to do my job. So I'm actually con uh, connecting face-to-face -face online with people much more than I did in the past. And I think that that is a trend that is going to be here to stay. So you mentioned it yourself in your, in your, in your voting. I think that we should appreciate the fact that as managers, we need to be able to provide clarity as this environment is very, very uncertain and very, very vulnerable. We need to provide clarity in order to make sure that people can be feeling a sense of safety. One of the things that I, I'm fascinated about is to try to understand how a leader can be much more of a bottom-up leader than a top-down leader. I think the whole way of, of, of uh, interacting uh, in an organization is going to be changing. I mean, I think that we have seen over the last couple of weeks and months that people together, it doesn't have to be, you know, on the high level of an organization, but people together can really make a difference. So I think that leaders nowadays going forward need to understand how to be much more of that bottom up leader than they uh, have done before. Also understanding that that agility is the new black, has been it for a while, but certainly now it's here to stay. We need to understand how we can be more agile and more agile in ways where we can get ideas to flourish in our organization, but certainly also to flow. That is the responsibility of a leader, isn't it? To be agile and make sure that creativity, ideas, they flourish and they flow. And to do that, we need to make sure that leaders also step up and lead the way in campaigning for a culture of uh, being agile and servant as a leader. Now, servant leadership, it's a concept that has been around for a while. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the concept, but I think that servant leadership is really you know, 
um, showing itself as a solid and interesting psychological trend as a leader, if you will. Because leadership, servant leadership, is really all about serving others before being served. And leaders need to prove, need to prove themselves by now stepping up to serving others before being served. I'm going to share a little bit more uh, about that in a moment. In a moment. I think we're, we can all, I mean, accept the fact that work shifts now to virtual. No doubt about it. We're doing it now, being together virtually. And that's a fact. And nobody's questioning that. And I heard the other day that some people are saying, well, you know, as soon as we're opening up again, we're coming back to the office, back to the environment, working environment, we're not going to be connecting that much uh, going forward virtually. I think that is, that's a mistake. Uh, I think that is a wrong assumption. I think we will see continually, continuing going forward, a lot of organizations doing much more of uh, virtual connecting. Uh, I think even the CFOs will appreciate uh, the new reduced travel budget going forward. Shame on the airlines, shame for the airlines, of course, sad for the airlines and hotels, but it's, it's, it's a way of working that I'm sure we're going to be seeing much more of. But that, of course, also for these skills that I mentioned in the beginning that we need to develop. Skills being able to understand and connect virtually without actually being together physically in the room. We can't be that as much as we could in the past. We're not going to be doing that as much as we did in the past. So what can we do in order to learn and develop some of those skills that we need to have effective virtual settings? And there are a lot of tips and tricks out there already available to you in terms of how you can you know, get the settings uh, right uh, in the beginning. So transform to perform, that's really the, the essence of all this, isn't it? We need to change our behavior as leaders to be able to perform because our performance is dependent on the people that we are together with, that we are leading, that are following us. And as this transformation is going on, I think that one of the keystones is going to be our understanding of how we can put purpose as the new strategy, if you will. I think that people will going forward now, people will want to, they will ask for the purpose. Why are we doing what we're doing? What is it good for? And as a leader, we need to be able to tell that story convincingly. So in order to make sure that people can really, you know, sign up. After all, we talked about this before. Leadership is your ability to build and maintain highly effective teams that are performing well all the time, even if they are at home, as many of uh, employees are at the moment. I've been surprised to hear when I talk to uh, customers, uh, colleagues, friends and family, how many people actually are at home right now, maybe only working a little bit compared to what they did before. And I'm puzzled. I cannot begin to understand why a leader or a manager would not want to you know, uh, capitalize on the opportunities for people actually being at home, being available, maybe you know, in a different way, more effective than if they were actually back on the job. I mean, I can't begin to understand why a leader would accept that people are staying at home and maybe only connect with them once or twice in a week at the most, instead of being able to connect every day or every second day, asking people to get involved with doing bits and pieces. So inspired by my good friend and colleague, Chris Rycroft, uh, I have three suggestions for you. Three easy applicable suggestions for you to be much, much better at leaving the legacy behind that you want in terms of how you led your team through this COVID-19 crisis. Now, the first is going to be all about serve, serve by sharing information. How can you serve others by sharing information? How can you serve others by listening? Listening with the intent to understand and not just waiting for an opportunity to interrupt. And the third suggestion I want to share with you is how can you serve by engaging and involving people much, much more. So let's have a look at the serving by sharing information. You need to be able to provide as much as you can to the environment around you valuable information because people are going to be insecure if they don't have the information. I mean, no, no leader can anymore say, any longer say, you know, I'm going to deal with that later. It may be not my task. You know, I'm sure that head office is going to issue some instructions that I can then pass on to my team in an SMS or in a text message. No, you need to step up and you need to make sure that you get all this information and then you pass it on in a way that creates value to people around you. You need as a leader to understand and anticipate that this is the new normal. I mean, 
I think we've all been through a lot of courses on change management. And I think that we have all learned and understand you know, the elements of change management. You, know, you have this curve and all of a sudden people are frustrated and then they're worried, but then everything goes back to normal. I think those days are long gone. Things are not necessarily going back to normal. This is the new normal. And it starts today. Today starts you know, with the future today, not like tomorrow or the day later. So I think that we should anticipate that this is a new normal and then acting and developing our skills accordingly. Now, we need to be able to, to make sure that our organization is prepared for growth and creativity. And we need to provide that important base level of psychological safety for people on our team. Because if people are unsure or insecure, it will undermine our motivation, our engagement, our commitment, and eventually our morale. And as a business, we just simply cannot afford that. So this is a matter of don't overreact, don't underreact, be adaptive. But how can you know that you are adaptive? Because you ask for feedback. So Sarah, you know, I hope I answered your question, blah, blah, blah. Is that satisfying to you, satisfactory to you, and so forth. Now, Paul, you know, I know that you've been concerned about this and that. You know, are you, are you more or less okay with that now? Now, the second tip I want to share with you is serve by listening. And I know this sounds easy, but I've found over the years that a lot of leaders have lost or forgotten the skills as how to listen. Because listening is not like hearing. I mean, the ability to hear is a you know, gift from God. But the effect of listening is a choice that you make. Listening to people's concerns, issues, uh, uh, whatever they have on their mind. So think about it. A lot of people at this moment, they're being told a lot. They can be told a lot about you know, from you. They're being told a lot in the press. This often includes the need to talk about concerns. Make sure that you're available to, 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 to have them share those concerns with you. And concerns might be, you know, how long will this crisis last for? When will we return to normal? You know, is my job at risk? What about my friends and family? Make sure that you listen and you treat people's concerns with lots of empathy. You're not expected to solve the problem, but you are expected to be there and to listen and to offer information, to pass on information that is relevant uh, to people. And make sure that we reach out, answer their questions, encourage them, and basically be with them and serve them. Now, finally, serving by engaging and evolving. This is a fascinating uh, area, and many of you actually voted for that as one of the things that you want to see uh, much more of going forward. I mean, there are a lot of platforms already. This is one of them today, where we can actually connect and be with other people. And I think that we should appreciate that when we are with other people, with our staff, with our crew, invite them to share. Make sure that you and collectively your team can tap into that genius. That's, that, that lots of genius is on your team that is otherwise going to waste if we don't tap in. Ask people to contribute, to come up with suggestions, ideas, and thoughts and proposals. Make sure that people can focus on their work. I had a talk with a good friend the other day, and she told me that her boss had said to her, don't worry, you know, I know that you're not able to perform to your standards as times are difficult. And her reply was like, yes, I am able to. I am capable of performing to my very high standard, but you need to ask me for things to do. You need to ask me to do something instead of just expecting me not to do as much as I would like to do. I think that people want to do a lot of work and they can be focused on their job. But you need to, as a leader, to make sure that you are encouraging them and involving them in doing so. Which is why it's not about me, me, me. It's about us, what we are doing together, you know, how we are doing together. After all, it's leadership, not leadership. I just thought that was an interesting one. So leading with a purpose becomes a center of your leadership uh, capabilities and behavior going forward. And make sure that you can... Uh, create an environment where people can connect and collaborate quickly. Uh, quickly here is in sense of the, the able, ability to be agile. We can't afford to sit around for a long time discussing, debating. We need to make solutions uh, and move forward. And that's what you need to do in order to create those kind of environments uh, for people to be able to move forward. So this new norm will be displaying a true sense of caring and it will create a sense of belonging and community, and that's important. 
Think about this. Coming back to what uh, Henrietta said earlier today. Think about this. In a year's time from now, you're sitting there. Final question in your interview uh, for this wonderful position. This is your dream job. And people are asking you, so tell me, what did you do during the COVID-19 crisis? What did you do? But more importantly, what did you accomplish? And what did you avoid in terms of your team and your organization? So at the end of the day, think about it. What is your legacy going to be like? And in in, in, in sense of, of, of today, you know, your legacy is not like when you're gone, you know, when you're six feet under. This is when you are on the other side of this crisis and you look back to your leadership legacy. What would you like to be remembered for? Ask yourself that and then act accordingly. Develop the skills that you need, test it out, ask for feedback. So basically, coming to the uh, closure here, nobody can expect you to know exactly or predict exactly when this crisis will end. But people around you can expect you to be ready to hit the gas when it does. And I think, I trust, I uh, expect that applying these three simple tips and tricks, you'll be well on your way. Serve by sharing information, serve by listening, and serve by engaging and involving. And uh, with that, I'm going to be turning it back to you, Henrietta, for uh, the uh, question and answers. Thank you so much all for watching. Thank you for your time. Be safe. Thank you so much, sir. And it's it's always um, it's like a cascade of uh, of information. Uh, you can really bring a lot of value in uh, in in very very short time. I, uh, it was really really interesting, sir. And thank you so much for, for you. your insights. Um, we already have the first question, and that's from my dear colleague Tia. Um, what if you, as a leader, let's say you were paralyzed, you 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 weren't even able to? I mean, there are also people leaders, aren't they? So what if you were paralyzed and you didn't really act properly during the, 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 uh, the, the hard part of the crisis? What, uh, is, is it too late to, to, to do something now or is, uh, are we still in time? I mean, many people are asking me, so, so is the window closing? I mean, can I still do something or is it like, well, that was it. I had my chance and I blew it. I mean, in my book, it's never too late to be better at something. And I think that as a leader, you need to appreciate that that the window is not going to be closing. I mean, it may be narrowing, but it's not going to be closing. This new norm, if you will, will be the new norm going forward. This is reality, and we're not going to go back to the old days. So I think there will still be a tremendous need for leaders to step up to the pie. I mean, to really, you know, be a leader and not just a manager. Absolutely, I agree, son. So I, I see that Benjamin, he has written here as um, to be in uh, with good um, uh, stories from the real life that he says that their CEO or his CEO uh, was being completely open about, about layoffs um, without sugarcoating anything. So it, uh, he really felt that it was a great leadership. And um, yeah. Isn't that, I, isn't that great? And again, as we talked about previously, there are so many good stories out there. Unfortunately, and as I said it earlier to today, this is not rocket science, this is common sense, but it is not yet common practice. So let's all of us spread and share those great stories like the one from Benjamin to inspire those leaders that would like to, but may feel that it's difficult to you know, get started. This is also why we have made a platform like this uh, tidbit. So here you can just gain knowledge into small things that you, you don't know anything about, or you can share your knowledge like you did with us today. So this, this is this is one of the things. And I must also say to who are listening here, if you have any good ideas to what a tidbit could uh, could be, if you have something to share, you don't have to be like the expert as CERN is in leadership. It could also be some very, very interesting um, uh, initiatives you have been doing out, uh, out in your um, company within all different fields. It, it doesn't have to be about leadership. It could be about drones or whatever else. Um, reach out to, uh, to myself and Tia. You can find us. Now you have the employee uh, page so you can see uh, who you can reach out for there if you prefer one who is window bother or art lover or loves to read books. So uh, this is also one of the things that to get a little bit behind the scenes of your of your colleagues. I mean, I I have, I have been five five years at the uh, MDC, and I thought I knew all my colleagues, but I found out new stuff about my colleagues with this little exercise that I uh, gave. And I had a few of my colleagues who were like, 
ah, no, we don't want to do it. Why should we do this? But then, you know, when the first five, ten people there, then everybody has been engaged now, and they really think that it's 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 great fun, and they get to know st new stuff. Well, I have um, a, a last couple of questions here. Um, of what we heard today, what is going to be the most challenging to apply, CERN? Can you give us a short one on that? Well, I think that from uh, the, uh, the the poll we saw earlier, I think that one of the challenges is going to be to listen, to really listen to people's concerns and, and worries. And this is not about asking people, so how are you doing? Are you okay? Can you cope with it? Because that's obviously obvious the questions that we're going to be asking. But it's much more much more to the to the extent of listening for people's concerns in terms of their work. What is it that they do and how can they contribute and feel part of a team much more than they do today? And I think that would be challenging probably because a lot of us are thinking that, you know, well, listening is not really that difficult. It's a skill. And I'm sure you can you know, master it to a greater level than you already can today. I think sometimes people, they can, they, they can be afraid to hear the answer. So they, might, they, they don't want to pose the question because they're afraid of listening to the answer. If they say, am I a good leader? And then if they say, no, you're shit, <laughs> they don't want to know it. But actually, it's better to know it because then you can react on it. And if you don't want to have the no, ask the question differently. Yeah. How can I become an even better leader for you than I am today? That's the good one. I have another question from Nanachit. Uh, which is the most important one to remember and maybe also to provide a room where the Propel can say the truth, to be honest? Propel? If, if I understand your answer correctly. People, your, <laughs> people, people, people. people. <laughs> Sorry. So, what is uh, yeah. today, Sean? Which is the most important one to uh, to remember? And uh, and uh, <laughs> you're asking me to choose, you know, which one of my children I love the most? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that I think that if, if, if if we at this time with this crisis, if we do come to an understanding and an acceptance that leadership is about serving others, I think we're a long way already, you know, ahead serving others before being served i agree it's not that you're a leader then you have all your th people doing stuff for you it's it's a teamwork and and uh, if if you want people to serve you then you have to serve them because they'll not they'll not be happy with you well um i think so uh, that was uh, all for today we are we are uh, in a broadcast of 32 minutes so we are over time and we don't want this to be a long one so i just want to let all of you know that uh, this is um this is uh has been broadcasted so uh, son has agreed that we can share this and uh, you'll receive an email uh, this afternoon where you'll have a direct link to this uh, one if you want to i mean could could be interesting to send it to the boss perhaps and say oh i went to this fantastic webinar today or tidbit uh, I think you should uh, listen to uh, to Søren Rygaard's uh, great stuff. So uh, you, this will be available. And, yeah, and if you will, ask your boss to have a talk with me. Yes, um, Tia, can you can you write the yes the the email of Søren here because I'm sure also if if you have some questions directly to Søren, he will be more than happy to answer him as I know you. So yes. uh, Søren's email here, and I can see that Tia she has also been putting up the upcoming tidbits. You can see them here. Uh, tomorrow we will have um, a live call from Manila, uh, where we have uh, where we have V ships, uh, the, the ship management group, uh, which is uh, talking about seafarers' health, and then we are going to talk about something completely different on the, on uh, Thursday, where we will have Asmus Edspo from uh, from Reflow, who is going to talk about. Um, circular economy so that's completely different but it's all things that we have to uh, get a little bit about know about and uh, and you want you want to taste one one tidbit or you want to you want to have them all it's up to you so uh, with these words uh, i want to say thank you again to to Sam and uh, thank you for all of you spending your lunch here with us and uh, we hope to see you again bye bye everyone